everyone. Thank you for coming back to the At TT's House podcast. Remember to like, follow, and share. Also, remember what platforms we're on. Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio. We are on... Apple Podcast. Apple Podcast. I always try, I try not to forget, but sometimes I forget. Mm-hmm. So welcome. If you've been here before, you already know what we do. We talk about relationships. We talk about what's happening in the news. We talk about greens and greens. We talk about money and, um, you know, money matters and health. My, my coffee was in the way, son. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> Got my Virgo cup representing. Y'all, let me just say this. Before we even get started, I went to the Beyonce concert. Now, you know, producer, didn't I say, me and Trina said, we not paying to, for money yeah, to, to go, go to see Beyonce? Because uh-huh. I wasn't really a fan, y'all. But when I went to the concert, I became a fan last night. That's fire. When I tell you. If you've never seen a performance, like somebody really performed, like I've been to rap concerts, I've been to like New Edition and stuff, but there's no comparison. Really? I've Besides, I, I seen Missy Elliott this year at Essence. And when I tell y'all, when I see Missy Elliott, she's a performer too. Yeah, she's a too. performer too. I was about to say that. But Beyonce, I mean, they on the same kind of wavelength, same kind of level. But Beyonce, yes. man, I'm a fan. Y'all Talk just say, you. I'm part of the Beehive now. Because uh-huh. I'm like, wow. Just, I think, for me, it was the love of the fans. Because mm-hmm. there was a lot of people like me that was like, you know, well, I'm not a fan fan, but I wanted to see her come perform. It was on my bucket list. So a lot of people were saying, because, you know, before you go into the concert, you can get food and stuff like that. So we were, like, eating at the little table. And there was a couple ladies there, um, you know, and we were just talking. And uh, most of them was like, well, you know, I'm not really a fan, but I wanted to come because I wanted to experience it. Mm-hmm. Because everybody talks about the experience at being at one of her concerts. Man, nobody, you can't even tell somebody this. So you have to experience it for yourself. Yeah. Like, that's how. Then, I don't know if it was like the acoustics in the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Baby, that whole floor shook. Mm-hmm. People was in there like, when I tell you, you couldn't help but to dance, sing, talk to your neighbors. Like, they was like schooling us. Because when I first, when we first got there, first of all, Alana got us there early, y'all. The concert didn't start tonight. You know what time we was there? What? 6.30. What was y'all doing there so early? Because <laughs> she thought the concert started at 8. We yeah. wanted to beat the traffic. So, everybody know, if you live in Atlanta, there's a lot of traffic. Yeah. So, we definitely wanted to beat the traffic. But she was like, we're going to get there. We're going to go to get something to eat. So, we end up changing our minds and getting food at the stadium. Mm-hmm. Um, which was cool because they had all kinds of different little vendors. So anyway, you know, we get there early. And it's funny because when we sit down, the guy sitting next to us, he came by himself. Mm-hmm. Dennis, shout out to Dennis because I got his phone number. He was cool, bad, cool people. But, you know, we were talking and stuff. And he was like, him too, he was like, well, I've been to, you know, a couple of her concerts and this and that. And he was like, she always come out on time though. But they moved the concert up to nine from eight. Mm. Cause they was like, I was like, oh, the seats ain't gonna sell out, man. When I tell you we was wrong, all of them seats sold out. Mm-hmm. Y'all, if you get an opportunity, when I tell you a great, and she did it three nights in a row too. Well, she got a break on Sunday, mm. Sunday night. So she did Friday, Saturday, Sunday when she was resting, and then Monday. Monday, okay. And she sang three of her songs that I, you know, that was not in, sung at any of her other concerts. So she did it for Atlanta. Um, Man, it was just wonderful. Even like when she went back to change her clothes, like the stuff that was on the screen, like it was so thought out and so manipulated. Yeah. That's how I know. Like you, you got to be a great performer to put the show together like mm-hmm. that. It was so good. Yeah, I tell to Beyonce. I'm trying to go see her again really? in Houston, her hometown. No, that's probably the craziest that's one. That's right probably there. gonna be like, cause that's where she's from. Exactly. Like, I was just telling Tim, like, I want to go to Houston and see. I got tickets to go to Houston in October, but I'm thinking I'm gonna change my tickets to September. Yeah. Oh, it's only a, what month ahead, me. Yeah, September. Uh, I forgot the 27th. Yeah. Why not? Houston. Yeah, that's probably going to be the one. That's going to be the one. Eat some good barbecue before you go to the show. That's an event right there. Now, when I tell y'all the best concert I have been to in all my years, mm-hmm. can nothing compare to that. I'm a fan. I take back every word about not paying $500 for a ticket, mm-hmm. $1,000. I said, next time, 
be going on tour, I'm going to be at the front. And I don't care if it's a million dollar the ticket. Uh -huh. I'm going. in the front row? I'm, I want to be in the front row to experience... Yeah. I mean, she's she's smiling the whole time, like she's just beautiful. And they was like, people were like, she's so humble. And then her fans, of course, her fans that were sitting next to us, they didn't know I was gonna be talking about them on the um, at TT's house podcast. But one of the guys was like, "All right, when this song come on," I was like, "I don't even know that song." He was like, "It's okay, I got you, boo." So he was like, when the song came on, he tapped the guy next to me to tap me, and he was like, "You gotta be quiet on this song." So me and Alana was quiet. <laughs> And then with the whole arena, she told everybody, shut up or be quiet. I don't know what her exact words were, but everybody in the arena was quiet for mm -hmm. a few minutes. I was like, see, look at these people. I love it. Beyonce mm -hmm. fans, they going to school you and get you right. Mm -hmm. Man, I was so excited. It was so exciting. I had goosebumps the whole time. Like when I tell you it was just a time, it was a time. That's right. It made you want to get your life. Y'all, Beyonce will make you reevaluate your life and get your stuff together. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. And on top of that, she's a Virgo. I did not know she was a Virgo. Mm -hmm. She shouted out. Got my so Virgo, got Virgo cup. cup today. Yeah. B's a Virgo September. She's a September Virgo. Um, so she's serious. Mm -hmm. She's a serious Virgo. I'm not that serious. <laughs> I'm an August Virgo. But, man, it was a good, good show. Mm -hmm. Man, I thought she was going to bring Jay-Z out there because she did sing Dangerously in Love. Mm -hmm. And they said she didn't sing that in, in any other show. So I thought Jay-Z was coming out. And just to see her daughter perform, oh, my God. Now what does her daughter do? She was dancing. dancing okay. Oh, she's so cute. Mm -hmm. Like, she was so cute up there. So I had to give a shout-out to the tour. The tour was amazing. I want to go again, y'all. That's how good it was. So let's get into it. Mm -hmm. At TT's house. Let's talk about these poll results. What was our results from our poll? It was 100% uh, saying no. Well, the question was, does cursing devalue devalue how you look at somebody? And everybody said, 100% of people said no. Wow. And I had some, some feedback. Like, people was like, as long as they don't cuss at me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if he cuss or not. Long, yeah. Don't be cursing at me, though. Yeah, until they get embarrassed. And they're like, uh... <laughs> Yeah, then I might have to reevaluate. Yeah, until somebody embarrass them. Yeah, so they was in like, front of their boss. Because yeah, because I think that people sometimes, you know, there's a lot of people that I'm not gonna say don't curse, but they, like you said, we said before, it's a time and a place for it, mm -hmm. and you gotta know when's the time and the place. And I think that when you are um, a professional person, you can make that determination. But if you just somebody out here, just you know, yeah, living life. some people live in life. They got their own businesses. They don't have to be as professional. Mm -hmm. now, you may have to be a professional around your, you know, your clients or the people that you service. But depending on your type of business, you don't have to be out here watching what you say, right? Yeah. So that makes sense. But 100% said... No, it doesn't yeah. matter, which I'm shocked. Yeah, me too, though. I'm shocked about that result. So so you guys know, with these polls we take seriously, we might have a poll at the end of this conversation. We don't know yet. I haven't come up with anything. But I do want to talk about, we talked about the Beyonce concert. I want to talk about leadership in a relationship mm -hmm. and what what it means to be a leader in a relationship. What do you think about that? Leading a relationship. I think a lot of women... Expect men men to lead, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of women where there's a lot of men that allow the woman to lead. But yeah. does that devalue you as a man no, that's in your ego. position? That's ego. You, you think it's ego? Yeah, because she might be she might be more intelligent than you. She might be better at decision making. You know what I mean? I want to. Um, yeah, because being a leader, part of being a leader, and I'm a, I'm gonna tell you. Um, uh, this article is on the cool shop, which is crazy. Um, it's K it's called the cool shop. It's spelled K E W L shop.com. And they're talking about leadership in a relationship. And they talk about being able to lead as a leader. Decision-making is yeah, like decision -making, the main what, thing. That's what leaders do. They make decisions. They make decisions. <laughs> but do you think as a man, Allowing a woman to make you're the head of the household. A man is considered the head of the household. So if you're allowing your woman to lead, is she really the head of the household? The I mean, HNIC in charge. It you all know, depend on how the relationship is. If she's the one that brings home most of the money, she obviously makes better decisions than you to get into the position she's in. You know what I mean? I don't have no ego when it comes to none of that. 
Never did. I don't know. I just feel like I could be with somebody who makes way more money. I feel like I have to lead as a single person. Like I have to make my own decisions. But when I was married, Mm -hmm. you know, my husband was in charge. And I like that because I didn't know what it was. I, who am I paying? I'm here go my money, mm-hmm. and you pay the the utilities and stuff. I don't know who am I paying. What if they do the wrong thing with the money? What if they? I ain't never it had away? to worry about that. Thank God, because I never had to. You know, he did what he had to do to take care of his family. Like at yeah. the end of the day, but there are people like that. Yeah, that's what you I'm give saying. them the bill, and you then, allow them to lead, and then a woman got to take the leadership back from him because he gambling. Yeah, he out there gambling. Or she gambling. Yeah. <laughs> or you bought some a Louis purse instead of paying your light bill. Exactly. You went to go get your hair and nails down the set. Then there's people that I mean, I think some men. So that that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what do you consider a leader? Is the leader they making the decisions, right? Mm-hmm. Are they taking the lead on paying the bills? Like, you put the money in a the pot, they're taking the lead in paying all the bills. They're, you know, making sure anything that has to do with upgrades in your house, buying vehicles, that the, those are the things that you talk about, but he leads the decision making. Is that what being a leader is in a relationship? I guess that's my question. Uh, yeah. What direction hmm. yeah. do you take leadership? Because mm-hmm. for me, if a man can't lead me, I'm not attracted to you. Because mm-hmm. I'm already aggressive. Being Latina, I feel like I'm aggressive a little bit. And I need somebody that can be like, this is what we're doing. Although sometimes I we you can butt heads with somebody that's even though saying, that's you're what you like. You gonna listen every time, yeah. Yeah, I ain't gonna listen every time. Yeah. Probably not. So then, if I don't agree, but I mean you, you got you can't agree just because somebody is a leader doesn't mean that you have to agree with everything that they say, right? Tell me what you think. Yeah, but then I mean, are you gonna allow him to lead? Because then something you gotta. Got to let him lead if you're saying that he's the leader. You got to respect the decision. And then when it goes wrong, then maybe after that. Hmm. So you're saying let him lead regardless. And if he leads you astray, um, then you have to come back and say, we're going to re- uh, reevaluate your leadership skills. Yeah, I think it's more... Um, I believe more on the 50-50. Like, hey, you might be better at making decisions about the house than me. I might be better ma- at making decisions about the money than you. You know what I mean? Like, why can't we both lead in when in, in our strong points or where we're strong? Oh, yeah, find at. out where you're weak and where, yeah. where he's weak, the woman is strong. Where exactly. she's weak, he's strong. Exactly. I agree with that because I how. feel like... Everybody, everybody has strengths and weaknesses. Because yeah, just right? like a, a football team, basketball team, right? Everybody, it's a team. everybody can't be the forward. Everybody can't be, you know, the best three pointer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, but, that's a great. That's actually pretty good advice. Yeah, you know, it's like find out where out. you're strong at, and then you focus on that. You do that, and let the other one do the, what they're good at. Right, and in time and getting to know somebody in the relationship, you learn that. Yeah. This article says. This article says, though, as a man, if you do not take the lead at all, it is a severe mistake. It means you have given up all decision making. It's a weak position to be to be in and displays a profound lack of confidence. Mm. So they're saying because a man can't lead, he ain't confident enough to lead. I believe that, too. There's a lot of men that are not confident enough to lead somebody. They can't even decide what they want to eat. And they be looking at the woman like, what we eating today? She don't today? know what she want to eat either. Boy, your dad used to call me and be like, what we eating today? I want to eat this, this, and that. Like, he was a true leader. Uh-huh. A true leader. We even had a uh, a menu of mm-hmm. what we was cooking. Monday, Tuesday. You could look at the menu. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember Yeah, that. we used to put on there, Monday we eating this, Tuesday we eating that. And when we went grocery shopping, this is how much of a leader, y'all. But this is a military man, yeah. too. Like you're so, and he was a boss. He was a, you know, a leading officer in the mm-hmm. military. So, you know, you're leading your soldier. Well, he was leading me. I was a soldier too. <laughs> I was a soldier <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, I was a soldier too because he basically would call me and be like, you know, I want spaghetti for dinner. Uh, can you make lasagna for dinner? Can you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's a form of not really manipulating, but. 
you know, I just allowed him to do that because I was like, okay, whatever you want to eat, you know, you're working all day. There was times, you know, I didn't work. Mm -hmm. I was just at home. I went to school and I was at home. So, of course, I can appease you in that sense. But they, he said, they said, men that can't lead, men that can't lead, females lose attraction towards them. They become masculine in the relationship, which is true. Do you think that? Yeah, whoever's making the decision is going to feel yeah. more masculine. Yeah, but Gotta I don't be. think... I think it's ego, too, though. Um, Why you say ego? Uh, some I'm going to say some partnerships work out better like that. Like the woman yeah, takes seen, the lead. The man goes to work, gives her the money. She pays all the bills. No, nah, if I'm going to work, I'm not giving her the money, too. <laughs> I'm just saying. And it works for some men because they don't want to have to come yeah. home and pay the bills. They're like, I'm... I'm I have never been that I can woman. See that. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. I never wrote the checks out. I let your dad handle that. I'm just I saying, just... ain't nobody pimping me. <laughs> I ain't yep. going to work and giving somebody all my money. But you're going to work and, they're, they're, yeah, they give the woman the money and say, here, pay the bills. And you don't even know how much. Some men don't even know how much the bills are. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I was younger, my mom told me, ladies, listen to this. When I was younger, when I first got married, I was young. I was only 19 when I got married. And my husband was 21. And she told me, when you go to the grocery store, always make the check for more. Now, I did do the grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, he was an active participant in that, too. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> he would go to the grocery store with me to go grocery shopping. He liked grocery shopping for yeah, some reason. Yeah, you get to get the food. You make sure you get the <laughs> stuff you want. Right. He, it's like, nah, she be getting the Sam wrong pizza. Sam loved going to the daggone grocery store. Mm -hmm. He would go with me. But... Um, and I always hated for him to go because I always spent more money mm -hmm. and I was the one that paid for the groceries. Yeah. Come out of there, $600. They're saying, what the hell did we buy? But, you know, he likes snacks and juice and he liked to eat. Candy, so, all that. So, all kinds of stuff. We was in there buying all kinds of stuff. But to go back to what I was saying, what was I saying? He was an active participant in everything. In the grocery yeah. store. So, he did, like, allow me to make decisions. But a lot of stuff... You know, I just let him lead on that because I didn't want to be, I just didn't feel like I wanted to do that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean. But I feel like because I I need a strong man to lead me, if not, I don't think I would be attracted to, to somebody that would be like, you decide, you decide, you decide. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want you to tell me. And even I experienced that in my in my current relationships. Like when I I ask them, "What do you want for dinner?" Mm -hmm. And they tell me, "What okay?" Because if I make the decision, you are gonna eat what I want. Mm -hmm. And it's always gonna be like that. Oh, I felt like cooking this. I felt like cooking that. But with you know, in a relationship, I think the woman is always. It's like our part of our role is to ask them, like, "What do you want to eat?" What should I have fixed for dinner? What do you feel like eating? You know, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I think that that... And that always keeps the man on his toes as far as I'm the leader. I'm leading my household. Yeah. Because she comes to me and asks me. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm So, and it also says, a man... Let me see. Demonstrates strong values about himself and his attitudes towards the relationship and his girlfriend. He's not jealous or needy. He has a purpose in life, life that drives and satisfies satisfies him. He wants a relationship not to complete him, but instead to share the exciting experiences he creates himself. Mm -hmm. You think that's true? No, that's 100% true. I ain't never been a jealous type of person or needy. Needy. I'm going to go. Oh, I don't <laughs> like no needy. Man. First <laughs> yeah. of all, don't call me 20 times a damn day asking me what I'm doing. Yeah, annoying. It's annoying. And, uh, you know, men, I think, but, but that... I'm going to tell you what I, a guy has told me in the past is that I don't act like I'm interested because I don't call and I don't text. If you don't call me, I'm not calling you. If you don't text me, I'm not texting you. Oh, that's where I get that from then, huh? You get I that from that, me? Yeah, I guess so. You probably do. I do that same thing. <laughs> I really got to like you a lot to be like, hey, what you doing today? Hey, good morning. Because that's just not, I don't feel like a woman should do that. Uh. But a lot of women do. Do you think that's wrong, too, for women to say, you should be checking for me early in the morning? Where's my good morning text? I think I think women expect that. The expectation is that the man will reach out first. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what... 
I don't know. Do you normally reach out in a relationship first, or do? You, but you sleep. You're a sleep pattern. Yeah, you know, I'll be so sleep. So you have yeah. to kind of establish like you might be up, but I ain't. Yeah, you know, they know that early first time, first day. Yeah. You know, they like, dang, why you ain't text me till four p.m.? I was. Sleeping. I'm sleep. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. So I don't know, but I feel like. I feel like I I need somebody to lead me. I need somebody to tell me what to do. What is the decisions? What are we doing with this money? Where are we investing it? Like, I need somebody that's headstrong. Mm -hmm. I think that's a headstrong man. And like this article says, if you... It, it feels like when you allow somebody else to come in and lead, it's like you don't have the confidence to lead anybody. What about when them... um them investments fall through and they lose everything. You're going to be mad that I'm, you... No, I'm not going to be mad because I think that it's a conversation that needs to be had. I think when you make the decision to go into a business venture, but you know that there's red flags, right? Uh, things come risk up. Risk in everything. There's risk in everything. So things come up as you're building. So you might have to say, hey, I'm not going to... I'm not... We're going to change our direction Mm -hmm. that's what a leader does yeah i'm gonna need you to know when the direction needs to be changed and our money needs to go somewhere else what if you don't yeah what if he ain't ready to uh give up on him no that's a conversation because you ain't about to lose my money (laughs) then i'm gonna be like i ain't gonna be able to do it so yeah so i just wanted to talk about that leadership and the relationship and what that looks like and because a lot of people think it's controlling yeah, no. when a man is a leader. And I don't think it's control. No, it's, it's not a control thing. Y'all, my dog is up in here snoring. I'm about to move him somewhere. It's all right. <laughs> is, he, is he bothering you? No, he's not bothering me. Man, why does he snore so loud? <laughs> what do y'all do for y'all dogs that snore? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He is just saying. I, I've never... First of all, I know he's loud snoring, but I ain't know he was this daggone loud. Mm-hmm. He's been through a traumatic experience, though, so maybe that's why he's snoring like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know, y'all. But let's talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about... I want to talk about, in the news, I want to talk about black excellence, because there was so much stuff this week that really just stood out to me. Mm-hmm. So many things that are going on um, that I see in articles about just people, young people just doing a lot of things. So the first CEO, uh, what do you think about this? The first CEO of PF Changs is a 33 year old black male. The first CEO? What do you mean? They've never had a CEO before? They've had a CEO, but never a black uh, Oh, you're saying gentleman. this is the first black, black CEO? Black CEO, okay, and he's cool. 33 years old. Yeah, that's fire. How he Man, get, what he I want to know what, I want to know, yeah, that's what I said. I want to know. What skills you had to develop in order to get their attention, to get their attention and to be 33 years old. Cause I feel like in time, um, and being in professional jobs, you build your credibility, yeah, your you build card, your, your portfolio, cloud. you build your confidence, mm-hmm. you build, um, the ability to, to lead mm-hmm. and leadership skills. I don't think are inherent. That's not something you, it's there. Do you think, I think it's something well, I'm not going to say they're not inherent because they can be. You could just be a leader. There's people that, there's followers and there's leaders. Yeah. You can tell that on the playground exactly. when you're, you're growing up. Yeah. You know, some people are followed by other people and mm-hmm. those people lead, right? Exactly. So so I think some skills are inherent, meaning you're born with them mm-hmm. and some you have to be developed. So I want to know, like, what skills did he have that he brought to the table and what did he have to learn? To be in a position of a CEO at 33 years and old. And then what other companies did he, was he a CEO for? Right. Who Because that's a big for? company. So I would imagine he did something great before that. He ain't fresh out of Did he start of- at the bottom and work himself up? Was oh. he within the CE? Was he already within With the PF? PF Chang and Did you come in as a bartender or a, yeah. a server? Were you washing crazy. the dishes? Like, it's it got to be some. Yeah. Something to that story exactly. for somebody to give him a chance at 33 years old. I thought that was like amazing. Um, then on top of that, the first I'm just talking about black excellence today, y'all, as far as our news. Um, Tyson Hobson Powell is the first black four star general in the U.S. Marine Corps. That's fine. So this is their first black four star general. Dang, how Marine long Corps. the Marine Corps been around for? It's been around for a long time. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. And he looks pretty young. Like, he doesn't look like... 
I know he's probably probably joined because people usually join the military really young. What 18, 18, 18 19? 17, 18, 19. He looks amazing. So Mr. Powell, I don't know what you've been doing. But Mr. You, Powell? Yeah, his like name is Tyson Hobson Powell. Is that like Colin Powell? Not Colin Powell, Powell. Yeah, I was about but, to say, is that in his But he's another note? Powell, yeah. Are we so, sure they're not related? I don't I don't think so. I didn't check that. Yeah, that's my how he got that job. But he is the first. Yeah, you talking mess. You talking mess. Somebody put a referral. Did Colin Powell put a referral in for him? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) No, he worked on his own back and got there. (laughs) But it's impressive to see that. Mm -hmm. You know, when your dad first came in the military, came in as a um, as a a specialist. No, he was like a E1, E2, really low ranking. Then, um, you know, he got out, went to college, came back in. So it's like. There's, you know, people, you, you have to position yourself to know what you want mm-hmm. and how you want to maneuver your career. I think the military is a great career for some people. And you have to be disciplined, right? Learn discipline. Exactly. Christian is in the, my nephew, y'all, is in the Marine Corps. And he's doing pretty good, too. So the military is not all bad. And, I mean, I think some people, we're not getting... As many enlistments in the military as they used to in the past. What did you say this guy's name is? I'm trying to see if he's related to Colin Tyson Powell. Hobson, Tyson H-O-B-S-O-N. H-O-B-S-O-N. Okay, Powell. Powell. Yeah, see if it Google that and see, yeah, I'm trying to see if it. he's related to Colin Powell. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to get his attention so he stops snoring. <laughs> he's like, lady, leave me alone. I'm snoring. No, nothing's coming up. Nothing. I don't think they're related. Yeah, I just, had I just to double think it's check. just commonality in the last name. Thirteen-year-old girl becomes the youngest black person accepted into medical school. Thirteen years old. That's crazy. That's impressive. <laughs> when I tell you these kids, I'd be so impressed. In the other, there's another um, medical young school young guy. What's his name? Hold on, I know. I thought of. Wrote it down. Oh, here it is. 12-year-old. Okay. First, let me go. 12-year-old billiards prodigy um, from Bowie, Maryland. Yeah, that's fire. And it's crazy because the parents weren't even planning on buying a pool table. Mm. They just end up buying a pool table and he changed started playing pool. the path of his life, yeah. And it just changed the direction Mm-hmm. As far as he says, he spends five to six hours a day playing pool. As he should. That's how you get great at things. That's you how you get that. Well, he, they in. said he is competing out here with. Yeah. He's ranked number one amongst his age group. Like thirteen and under or something, right? Yeah, under his age group, which I think is amazing. Oh, that's fire, man! When I tell you. Let me see. I'm trying to pull up the article, y'all. Give me a second. Oh, he'd probably be hustling old heads, too. That to just think Man, that he you in nigga. there saying, put five, like, put, yep. put five dollars on the table. Man, Let's five, play. Put a hundred on the table. His he name like, is oh, D'Angelo what? Spain, 12-year-old African-American um, young man from Bowie, Maryland. He is the top leader already, um, the top-ranked player in the 13 and under division of the Junior International Championship. The parents were going to buy a karaoke machine. Mm-hmm. And when they went in the store, he asked them, could he buy a pool table? Yeah. And they were like, they had to rearrange. Because, you know, to have a pool yeah, table, you need like a basement. Big, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's huge. We had one. Yeah. It took up half the daggone space. Uh-huh. But to, for them to buy, invest in this pool table, not knowing where it's going, they're thinking, hey, it's just for entertainment. He's made a whole thing out of it. Exactly. That's amazing. Their parents should be very proud of him. Yeah, he done very, very for proud that of him. Ten, ten times over already, proud. Man, I tell you. And then there was another young man. Can I tell you about this young man right here? Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, y'all. Let me correct this. Tyson Hobson Powell is the young man. I'm acting like Trina now. <laughs> I got the names confused. He is the young man that finished high school at 13. Finished college at 15 and pledged Kappa at 16 and a- obtained his master's at 17 years old. And did all that while playing pool? Yes. 
No, this is the other little boy. No, this is the other little boy. I said he was the colonel. The colonel, that's not him. Michael Langley is the actual first four star general. Oh, okay, okay. okay, I don't, okay. Y'all, I'm sorry. Look, yeah, Sometimes you, I take notes. I <laughs> she get tired from the up. concert I'm still. T- yeah. I am still exhausted from the concert. She's still at the lie. Beyonce concert. In I was mind. supposed to work out today. I was just telling uh, my producer that I cannot. Your body tells you when you're tired and it's time to go to bed. So that's what I'm going to do. And then, I thought this was impressive too. Myron Rolls, um, NF player, is 33 years old. He's an NFL player Mm -hmm. or ex-NFL player that is now a 33-year-old neurosurgeon. That's fine. Man, when I tell y'all I I had to make this news section about what's black excellence, Mm because, man, I tell you, it's so good to see all of this. I wish there was more Latino stuff out there, but I don't really find a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to start yeah, looking at different countries and start searching different things. But definitely good to see all of this. I wanted to bring, we always talk about the bad, but I wanted to bring the good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes we don't get the opportunity to discuss the good. We get so wrapped up in social media, always showing the bad stuff. This yeah. is great stuff. There's some young people out here doing the damn thing Mm -hmm. i'm proud of them a lot of them are doing some things so let's go on to greens and greens i wanted to talk about because i seen an article about you know tracy morgan is yeah the comedian Mm -hmm. you know he used to be a little bit overweight and he talks about taking ozempic and it's funny because he's doing an interview and in the interview the two ladies that are interviewing him i think it was Good morning, America. Mm-hmm. Um, they were interviewing him, and he was like, "Yeah, I've been taking Ozempic," and they thought he was playing, mm-hmm. and he was just talking because he's Tracy Morgan. Yeah, he's he's saying a whole yeah. bunch of jokes and saying a whole bunch of stuff, and they were like, "Are you really taking Ozempic?" And he was like, "No, yeah, I really am." Mm. He lost so much weight on this Ozempic. I think Ozempic was uh, first derived to be a drug that treats diabetes. Yeah, I think so. It's what uh Ozempic and there's another one. Um what is this other drug? Let me see. What it does is that it suppresses your appetite. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, had, I remember a, I had to mention this a couple months ago. I was like it was something that people been taking did. in LA. It's called Ozempic and then Wagovi mm-hmm. is another one. And I, on today, um, today.com, there was an article about it, a uh, young lady that says she was battling obesity. But I think that drugs, this is just my opinion, I always think like diet and exercise works for some people and some people it doesn't work for. Like they, mm-hmm. you can diet and exercise all you want and they don't lose the amount of weight that they want to lose. So then they go to these drugs to try to help um try to help um curve their appetite exactly so these are like appetite suppressants but you still even though you're on an appetite suppressant what if do you take this for the rest of your life yeah do you just lose the weight and then you have to think about how you eat i'm thinking you have to think about how you eat the entire time Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I would imagine. But you said they're not eating, so they probably aren't thinking so about So what it. happens when you stop taking the drug? Do you gain the weight back? That's just like with the lap band and the weight loss surgeries. Mm-hmm. Because your mind has to change. Psychologically, you have to reevaluate how you look at food, right? Mm-hmm. And if you can't do that, no, ma- no matter how much exercise... Because there's people that eat whatever they want and they still do exercise but it, they're not losing the amount of weight yeah or you become stagnant because you're not, not doing can't, can't you can't take it out. to the next level yeah yeah like you said it's i'm gonna oh i ate 800 calories i'm about to burn 800 burn 800 calories, 800 calories. Like, yeah. like at the end of the day it's all about your mental like i i applaud that these drugs are helping you control your appetite but at the end of the day is it controlling the way you think about yeah. food and how you handle and what's the side effects of it um i don't know if there's any side effects i nah, didn't let me see if it lists anything, anything. Your body. so it says um it says lifestyle changes like i said lifestyle changes are always the hallmark of how we intervene first so the doctors say we we try to change your lifestyle and how you eat food mm-hmm. 
but this is just an uh, added measure of helping you lose the weight you yeah, want to lose. Confidence yeah, more confidence and, you know, just helping you suppress your appetite. Because I think when psychologically you, because there's sometimes where I'm sitting here and I know I'm not hungry, mm -hmm. but I want something sweet. Yeah. Or I'd be like, oh, I've cooked something and there's leftovers. And I'd be like, oh, I don't want to eat that. I want to eat something different. That's funny. Do you ever do that? Yeah, I do that a lot. <laughs> I'm going to eat the leftovers too still. Though. You still going to eat the leftovers yeah, and then yeah. find something else to uh -huh. eat? Oh, my God. Because it's like you struggle with making good decisions. You know what I'm saying? I'd be, I'm gonna, I'll be the first to tell you, like when I'm at home, I make great decisions about eating. But when it's time to go out and eat. Yeah. It goes all out the window, but it's okay to, I always say it's okay to, um, you know, break your diet one day. I don't call it a diet either. I call it a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. I've completely changed the way I look at food. And I think that for some people, like these drugs are great, but you have to think about how your mind mm -hmm. and how you look at food. Do you look at it as, as a coping tool for depression? Or are you coping with, you know, life stressors, eating? Mm -hmm. Like you have to really look at how you look at food. Yeah, exactly. It's or more is it psychological. Just nutrients. Do you know you just need it to survive? Like, because it says they've had previous medications that targeted obesity that haven't been great. Um, Wagovi and Ozempic are showing the potential of changing a person's brain chemistry hmm. to impact their obesity. Okay, that's what you were saying. That yeah, needs to be done too. Yeah, so. That's that's like the main thing, but it's causing you not to have an appetite. So when you stop taking these drugs, are you changing the way you eat? And then you're no longer get, having the pills to help suppress your appetite. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which makes sense. But at the same time, it's like. Like I had to think about. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here looking through the article, too. Mm -hmm. You have to think about. Um, I can tell you, for me, it makes it easier. Like. I have to know what I'm eating like throughout the day. So that means I have to meal prep. Certain things I might make rice brown rice and meal prep it put it in the refrigerator and mm -hmm. then just add a meat later on yeah. and a vegetable later on but like the basic core stuff mm -hmm. like i have to have that done yeah to I be able know to know the day before what, what you're gonna, gonna eat. eat the next day yeah like even yeah. watching zao y'all my son zao like i don't know how he does it sometimes He's greedy. I'm greedy, too. That's what I'll be thinking about. I'm like, oh, what am I eat tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's very plain. Like, he doesn't meal prep, but he makes mm -hmm. sure that he's weighing. Like, I'm not that extreme. I'm not weighing nothing. If I want a second helping of rice, I'm going to eat that shit. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's crazy because I know the last time I went to the doctors, there's certain things that I eat. Um, because I'm trying to get enough protein in, and sometimes that stuff is really got a lot high in sugar. Mm. Last time I went to the doctors, she told me, she was like, you're borderline diabetic. And I was like, really? I ain't never been borderline diabetic, but mm. it's because that week before mm. I went in there to get my blood work done, I had ate a lot of, um, protein granola, mm. the kind protein. Yeah. Yeah. I can just sit there and he yeah, eat the whole bet. bag. And I probably, y'all, I ain't going to lie. Because some days I don't, I'm lazy and I don't want to meal prep. Yeah. Like if it's one of those days where I didn't feel like meal prepping, I'm going to tell you, it's, I'm going to eat, I might eat the whole bag of the damn granola. Uh -huh. So I think my sugar was up because the granola has sugar in it. And then I, of course, I drink a protein shake when I don't, when I don't feel like cooking a meal, I might have a protein shake in the morning mm -hmm. or I put it in my oatmeal just to get that additional protein. But sometimes you have to. To really be healthy, you really have to think about what you're eating, what mm -hmm. you're putting into your body. Because um, if you eat too much of one thing, it's not good for you either. That's yeah. what I tell Zao. Like, too much protein can't be good for you. Yeah. You know, you have all that protein, too much fish, too much salmon. That, that stuff can't be good for you. Mm -hmm. You have to have a balance of different things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard. Like, I think everything... If you think of food as um, 
quantity, uh, uh, the quantity over what you're eating, like you should always eat a portion of it and not like two portions. And that's why I think Zaul is able to maintain what he's doing because he does do portion control mm -hmm. with everything. Yeah, he weighs. I about. ain't about to weigh anything. No, nah, I'm about to eat until I'm. I'm full. about to eat till I. <laughs> yeah, come on. Eat till I'm full. And I double like oatmeal because oatmeal is like my basic breakfast. I eat oatmeal every day, y'all. I ain't mm -hmm. gonna lie. I eat oatmeal every day, every day. So it's like get my protein shake, put my oatmeal in there. I do a. I don't do a half a cup of oatmeal. I do a cup of protein because I want to be full until about three o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then I might have like a late lunch. It depends if I'm working out. Then I have to eat. Like I try to get enough protein in there because you know you need protein to build muscle. Yeah, exactly. It's it, you got preparation is probably the best key. That's why a lot of people that go to the gym that meal prep they're successful because all they do is go in there, grab a meal, and keep mm -hmm. it moving. You know what I'm saying? I've tried those. Um, I've tried like the Hello Fresh. Oh, the places that send you stuff. That send you food. I haven't tried the Factor because mm -hmm. it seems like Factor is based on you pick what you. What you want to eat. Mm -hmm. You choose like high protein, you know, that kind of thing. But, and I feel like I eat the same stuff over and over. What about yeah, you? Do I you, do too. Do I'm you? very simple. Because you're, you're vegetarian. Yeah, exactly. So, it's very simple. Yeah. Like, like, but I'm like, don't your palate get tired sometimes? No, nah, I just care about being full as long as I'm stuffed. <laughs> You're like, Zao, can I tell y'all, he don't put no seasoning. Oh yeah, he be bugging then. <laughs> I'm like, at least put salt and pepper. He's like, no, salt makes you um, oh, retain yeah. water. Yeah, or, he on it. Yo, I'm like, I, I gotta put seasoning on my food. Yeah, I put seasoning on my food. I can't, y'all, I can't, I'm sorry. Let me put my little Cajun seasoning, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I love garlic salt. He won't even pepper. eat the rice that I cook. Because I put garlic salt in my rice yeah. or garlic powder, garlic salt. I put a little bit of olive oil, like, and I put it in the rice cooker. But he's like, did you season this? Like, he don't want any yeah. salt or anything in his food. That's fire, though. I don't know how he could do it. I mean, it's just food. I'm, like I said, but it's, it's about no flavor. Yeah, it's about being full. I don't know. It's about flavor for me. You got to eat. You got to enjoy your food. Yeah. But I think that's why he, you know, when he does go out to eat, he eats what he wants to eat. Yeah. And he doesn't go out a lot, but when he goes out to eat, he eat whatever the heck he want to eat. Mm -hmm. But he maintains. I'm going to tell you, since I've been lifting weights, um, I haven't gained any weight. Really? In over a year. That's because right. I feel like the hit exercises, the weight lifting, I don't do as much cardio as I used to do. I do a lot of hit, mm -hmm. you know, where I'm doing a lot of body movements. Mm -hmm. That has really helped me the last year really maintain my weight. Like, I don't, I haven't gained weight and I haven't lost weight. Mm -hmm. So, I think that, you know, you have to, I'm going to tell you, people think getting to the gym is like the easiest thing. I'm just going to go in there and lift a couple. No, you got to be routine. Mm -hmm. You got to know what kind of exercise, what are you trying to target? What kind of exercises do you want to do? What kind of muscles do you want to build? How much muscle do you want to build? Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to, are you supposed to be in a calorie deficit? Do your research. Yeah. Because you can't just go into exercising without Knowing what you're going to do. I've seen some bodybuilders that eat junk. Mm -hmm. Hamburgers, triple burgers. Like, how are y'all eating this food it's and protein. building weight? They're just putting that protein in them. But even carbs, french fries, massive french fries with cheese and all that stuff. I mean, Sin told me to eat as much carbs as possible. That's how he got big, you know. Wow. So the carbs just helps, you know, with... Sh Wow, with the muscles. Yeah, with muscle. Yeah, he's like, eat more Man, potatoes. and here I am trying to be lean as possible yeah. and not eat all this stuff. Yeah, but I've seen some bodybuilders that are eat a lot of food. And I think it's it, it's only at a certain stage when they're trying to build, right? Mm -hmm. When they're trying to maintain, they, they watch what they eat. Exactly. And okay, so I think like that's probably up. what it is. So y'all do your research and just know that your body is not the same as your exactly. neighbor's body. Exactly. Your body is different. You might need... You know, amino acids, you might need other stuff. You might need supplements. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely, and before you start exercising, talk to your doctor, especially if you have medical condition. You know what I'm saying? You got to make sure with being healthy, you got to make sure you do your research, talk to your doctor. 
if if you feel like you know you're overweight and you want to re- reduce weight, there's nutritionists out there that can mm-hmm. help you. There's so many avenues to you know watching your weight, watching what you eat, different. Uh, there's like diabetic cookbooks. Like there's so much information out there. You have to do your research. Mm-hmm. You have to. So with that being said, y'all, that is um, at TT's House Podcast. Make sure, like I said, you're watching on YouTube. Um, that's where we originated and started. We are on Spotify. We are on iHeartRadio and Apple Podcasts. So make sure you check us out there. Like, follow, and share. Um, I've had people saving us to their favorites mm-hmm. in the last couple of weeks on TikTok. On so, TikTok, that's yeah. right. Oh, we're on TikTok, too. But that's just the snippets, y'all. Remember that what you see on TikTok, on Instagram, and on Facebook is just a snippet. It's like a 20-second, you know, even less than that, of what is coming, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not the actual show. You have to go to one of our... um, one of our channels to to look at the show itself. So definitely go out there and like, follow, and share. And I want to thank y'all for coming back. We're out.